Ladies and gentlemen, wow we what a round one that have just passed us this previous weekend. Great round of rugby league. So good that the footy is back on. Such an enjoyable round. Now my weekends aren't boring. Now life makes sense. Everything is back to normal. Welcome guys to another episode of League Chat with a Stat. Appreciate you joining me once again for a brand new week. Round one, done and dusted in the bank. And let me just say, like I said, very wrapped. So happy. It has been way too long of a preseason. We finally got some footy in on the weekend. Still felt a little surreal that the footy was back on, but I'm so excited to be here. Going back to normal, reviewing all things for round one. Uh, and look, guys, you know what we're going to do. We're going to start off with the NRL ladder. Um, and I know it's very basic. I know it's nothing crazy. You'll see it behind me that it's updated, so you can see the order of the ladder there. But I thought I'd just go through with you guys anyway. So the Panthers are first, um, second are the Knights, the third are the Dragons, Storm in fourth, Brisbane in fifth, Raiders sixth, the seventh are Eels, and the eighth, the mighty Kennedy Banks and Bulldogs getting it done on the weekend. Um, and then coming in the bottom eight, the Cowboys, Titans, Sharks, Rabbitohs, Tigers, Warriors, Roosters, and Sea Eagles. So look, nothing to stress about. It's only round one. Um, and I think that, you know, with the ladder being set the way it is at the moment, it's definitely going to change. A lot of teams that are in there round one probably won't be there at the end of the year. So not really a time to be panicking at this stage about your teams for those that have lost. But look, we're finally in the top eight. It's been a very long time. So I'm going to take it and, and run with it. So like I said, I appreciate you guys joining me. Let's get straight into it and discuss... Round one, Panthers 28 defeated the Seagulls uh, to six. Um, and look, didn't see this coming. If I'm going to be 100% honest, Panthers were phenomenal. They were fantastic. I thought that, you know, in attack, it looked very slick. It seemed as if Nathan Cleary was in the side. You know, having looked at Sean O'Sullivan and in the previous stints he's had at the other clubs, you know, between Broncos and Warriors, I was a little skeptical to see how he would go and, and fit into the side. And it was seamless. Like, I was scared. At times, it looked like Nathan Cleary was actually running the show. Un unreal performance from him. Probably the best game of his short career. I definitely believe that. Uh, but not only in the attack were they great, in defense, they were fantastic as well. Obviously, they consider that try at, uh, at halftime, uh, which really, like it does with most teams, kind of hinders them into the second half and gives the edge to uh, the opposing side coming into the second half. But I, I really thought that uh, they really held their own. You know, Panthers had a few tries disallowed in the first half. Uh I kind of agree with the first try being disallowed about Q and Foran. And um, I definitely agree with the one about Brian Toto. Um, I genuinely think that, you know, Luai has to move back. Can't be in the way. Um, but look, Toto scores that. And the problem with that is because Toto scores that every day of the week. And he had done all the hard work to get to that point. He had broken four or five tackles to score that try. Very unfortunate it wasn't a try. But Panthers, it didn't hinder them. The point I'm trying to make is that they just continued to attack. They continued to abide by their structures. Um, and it, it was magical. It flowed so well. Seagulls were shocking. Um, the Panthers obviously did very well to contain Tom Trubojevic. Uh, they kind of put him in a corner and didn't give him much room to move around. Uh, he didn't have a terrible game, uh, Tom Trubojevic, but it was obviously very limited to what he could do. Um, look, Seagulls, like I said, they, were, they weren't the best. Uh, a lot of defensive lapses, which was very, uh, very poor to see. Um, an example for one of those was when um, Steve Crichton scored that try. Uh, and stepped around Brad Parker. Just simple defensive lapses like that, kind of one-on-one situation, got stepped around. So, look, that they'll, they'll, they'll be better. And when you look at the Manly side, and they had a slow start last year, in previous years they've had slow starts. But last year they lost the first four weeks before they went and won um, majority of their games towards the back end and finished in the top four. So like I said, it's not panic stations yet, but like I said, the Seagulls do have a lot of work to do. Um, and I'm not really stressing over their potential at this stage. So I think they're going to be absolutely fine. Uh, look, Dylan Edwards was huge for him. Uh, 31 runs, 340 meters, 105 post contact, a line break, five tackle breaks, and two offloads. Um, James Fisher Harris, 21 runs, 186 meters, with 75 post contact. Um, and Isaiah Yo, uh, 19 runs, 181 meters, 72 post contact, with three tackle breaks, three offloads, and 38 tackles. Uh, the highlights for me were definitely from the Panthers. Uh, Isaiah Yo, I think he's probably one of the best, or if not the best, lock at the moment in the comp. The, the way he reads the game, he's such a great ball player, can handle all types of pressure. Um, and, and the way he, what he brings to that side, that calmness and experience he brings to that side is second to none. So he had a phenomenal start to the year, which is really good to see. Um, and for me, like I said, for the Manly Seagulls, uh, the performance I was really impressed with was Ethan Bullimore. Uh, in his first game for the club and starting, uh, was the only one that scored the try for the side. But look, he starts, he fed a, a decent game uh, and 
in a proper 80 minute performance as well. Eight runs at 89 meters, uh, try line break, um, two tackle breaks um, with a couple of tackle busts as well, and and a few offloads there. So, and not only that, he also made a pretty pretty crazy amount of 39 tackles as well. So, and only missing one. So it was a great all around performance from um, from Ethan Bullimore, uh, and he'll definitely be looking to build on that. You know, as as the year goes on. Um, and, and trying to really lock in uh, that second row spot for when Schuster comes back in, he'll be trying to either get a spot on the bench or even try to nail that spot uh, in that starting side. But yeah, look, Panthers 28-6, like I said, uh, not paying stations at, for the Seagulls, but very good signs from Panthers, kind of like they played the grand final last week. The Raiders 24 defeated the Sharks 19, and, and look, I'll be honest, quite the win for the Raiders. I was going to start the year calling them the Canberra Faders again, like last year, but... Uh, Look, I just thought that they were fantastic. I thought, you know, Jack Wyden, 200th game, really stepped it up, um, really set the pace of that game, especially in that first half. Uh, they did lose Josh Hodgson early, uh, which really did hurt them at one point. Um, on top of that, they had no Jared Croker, Jamal Fogarty, and Jordan Rapana as well. So, And they also had Ryan Sutton uh, as 18th man. So they, they did have a bit of talent missing from the park, but they Raiders dug in and, and hung on to to kind of uh, finish off that game the way they did, a Hudson Young stepping up at the end there. So... Look, it was a good performance um, all up from the Raiders. Uh, look, there, obviously, there was about a 40, 35 to 40 minute period of where they really dropped off and allowed the Sharks to creep back in. And for the Sharks, they started really slow. They started way too slow for their liking, uh, allowed the Raiders to get out to 18 6. Once they got the got a bit of a roll on, Nico Hines started to play some good football. Uh, I thought he had an okay debut. I thought in attack, he, he, he looked pretty slick. He was okay, but in defense, was a bit of a worry. Uh, obviously, letting Jack Wyden get through was down on his end. So. He'll be looking to be better in defense, also in, in, also in his kicking, in his last tackle options. I thought that when he kicked, uh, some of those kicks shouldn't have gone down the mouth of uh, the fullback or the wingers. Um, he just needs to be strategically kicking him a bit better. Uh, but he'll have Braden Trindle come back, not this week, but the week after. So he kind of helped him out in that sense. But I thought he had an okay debut. But it took way too long for the Sharks to kind of get started. When they got started, they matched right up, even grabbed the lead with 10 minutes to go from that uh, Matt Moore than field goal. Uh, and then that Jesse Ramian late shot, so uncalled for that led to that try. If they really held the ground, they really could have won that game, but they just allowed the Raiders to get one more opportunity and they seized it with both hands. So uh, a credit to the Raiders for winning that game. Uh, the highlight for me, Joseph Tarpane. Uh, 18 runs, 146 metres, a tackle break, four offloads and 23 tackles. Starting to bring back that form that we've missed from Joseph Tarpane uh, and uh, really good to see him playing some decent football again. Uh, the Broncos, 11, defeating the Rabbitohs, four. I can't sit here and say that I expected that. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Look, it was fantastic from the Broncos. I, I really got to give it to them and give them all the credit here. They really dug in defensively, and I thought they played exceptional in defense. I thought the influence of Kurt Capel in that side already was huge for them, uh, and he had to quite the game as well, Kurt Capel. Uh, first game as captain for the Broncos, first game as a Bronco as well, so a really big effort from him. And you love to see him slotting a field goal. I mean, first time I've seen that from a forward in a while since Nathan Kalis against the Dragons back uh Back for uh, back at Paris Stadium, Pertex Stadium. I think the one after that I must have remembered was uh, Paul Gallen uh, kicking a field goal. I believe was oh, against the Tigers. I think bit pushing my memory, but love seeing forward take uh, take that opportunity and kick a good field goal. So it doesn't happen often, but when it does, you love to see it. Uh, look, I thought the halves of the Broncos were fantastic. I thought Billy Walters and Albert Kelly really guided that side. I thought they played really well. Look, a bit questionable in attack at times, uh, but it does give Kevin Walters a massive headache with Adam Reynolds back in the side this week. Uh, but look, moving over to the Rabbitohs, they were poor. They were very poor. They're missing Adam Reynolds. I don't care what the, anyone tries to tell me. People try to convince me. Otherwise, they are missing Adam Reynolds big time. I just thought that they looked a little lost in attack. Uh, they were really trying to rush all their plays, and they needed to kind of just wait a little bit, take a step back, and, and, and you know, just have the game unfold in front of them. They were missing Latrell Mitchell. Obviously, he comes back this week from suspension. Black Taffy was a late scratching as well, out for the next few weeks. So... Not the best of performances from the Rabbitohs. They really need to take their time in attack. Lachlan Ilias, I didn't think he was terrible. I thought he had an okay game. But it's going to take time for him to really lace up his boots and, and, and find the spot in that side to really guide that team around. So I thought, look, the Rabbitohs were poor. Like they said, they looked very lost in attack and they made too, way too many errors, especially early in the tackle count, um, which just allowed Brisbane to to just go through the game seamlessly and to just grind it out. And then obviously with uh, Kirk Capo kicking that field goal at the end. Uh, look, Payne Haas, not much 
to say about him, just another phenomenal performance. 23 runs, 187 metres, 82 post-contact metres, three tackle breaks, four offloads and 45 tackles. With Flegler missing for a month and Ryan James coming off the bench for a little stint, I did not expect to see Patrick Carrigan lift the way he lifted. What a performance. 21 runs, 190 metres, 77 post-contact metres, a tackle break, an offload and 32 tackles. I mean... Big numbers, coming back from that ACL injury, really good to see him put in a big performance like that. Um, and it was really good to obviously see that his knee injuries are potentially behind him. And like I said, Kurt Capel, you know, uh, he obviously kicked that field goal. Um, didn't have much involvement in terms of his attack, but he obviously had six runs, 53 metres. Um, however, he did have a line break assist and a try assist with two tackle breaks. And... Uh, he did make 40 tackles as well. So a, a very good performance from Kurt Capel on his first stint at the club. Um, and with the, obviously Adam Reynolds coming back in, uh, we'll be keen to see whether Brisbane can really build on that performance they had um, against the Rabbitohs. Uh, the next game was the Knights, 20 defeating the Roosters 6. And honestly, did not see this coming at all. Completely shocked me. Kind of makes sense once you kind of think about it and you pull back. But look, the Knights were fantastic. Uh, they played a whole different brand of rugby league. Um, to, compared to what they've used to. You can already start to see the influence of Andrew Johns in Jake Clifford and in Adam Kloon. Um, and I thought Dan Gagai, coming back to the club, uh, was played fantastic. Obviously had that easy try gifted to him, but was a threat in attack, was great in defense, um, and didn't allow the Roosters uh, to really do much on his side of the field. Uh, but look, the Roosters, look, they were poor. There's no going around about it. Yes, they had nine players playing their first game of the year, and they looked really gassed. Fair enough. Completely understandable. But like, like the Manly Sea Eagles, they'll get better as the year goes on. They're still my, they're still my premiership winners. Uh, they're still a team I think that will win the comp and be there at the end, at the last dance. So I'm not really stressed with the Roosters. It'll take time to build combinations. Sam Walker and Luke here haven't played much together. Uh, Kiwi Radley haven't played in the last few years together. So th there's there's combinations that are a little bit rusty at the moment, but will get better as the year goes on. So, look, I'm not really stressed about the Roosters. It was just a very poor performance, and the Knights really grabbed it with two hands and played a great style of football. Uh, Mitch Barnett, for me, Mitch Barnett, sorry, was probably the pick for me. 18 runs, 163 metres, 92 post-contact metres, a tackle break and 18 tackles. So I thought he was uh, influential uh, coming off the bench um, and put in a massive performance. And uh, honestly, and I thought Dave Klemmer, I had a really, really good performance. Uh, definitely troubled the defenders for the Roosters. Um, and, you know, he punched out a good 46 minutes off the bench as well. Made 16 runs, 125 metres, uh, 71 post-contact. Um, it was really just a no-nonsense performance with two offloads and 19 tackles. And Dyson Fuzzle, uh, another great performance for him. 18 runs, 147 metres, 71 post-contact metres, five tackle breaks um, with an offload and 37 tackles. So, look... Give credit, full credit to the Knights. Not going to take anything away from them. Um, and look, they had a great win, and it's really good to see uh, that happen. And like I said, with the Knights, they've lacked consistency for so many years. So, looking to see, hopefully, they can build on that performance and get another win this week against the Tigers. Dragons twenty-eight defeated the Warriors sixteen. Uh, it was a good performance from the Dragons. Very similar to the Raiders. Uh, started off great, um, got off the blocks. First half an hour was pretty some solid football. Um, but the classic Dragons allowed the other team to come back, in this case, the Warriors. Um, and they did enough to hold the Warriors. They were looking pretty desperate. The, the second the Warriors get a roll on, they're very hard to stop. And we started to see a little bit of that in that game. Um, the Warriors looked, they obviously weren't at their best. There were a few men down. You know, Reese Walsh was missing from suspension, which will be back again this week. And Matt Lodge was missing from suspension last year as well. So they really missed a bit of that go forward and that, and that magic in attack at the back. Um that you know the Warriors have been training through all preseason. So, uh, look with Rich Watch coming back, they'll definitely be better next week. But look, there was just a moment in the game, and it just frustrated me. If I'm going to be 100 percent honest, uh, look, Sean Johnson's crossfield kick with 12 to go, uh, early in the tackle count, we were up by two points. I, I just, for the life of me, couldn't understand why they had done that. Like I love Sean Johnson, and I love the way he plays, but there's still something in him that he brings out these stupid little errors in his game. Like, you don't kick it with, with 12 to go and you're up by two. You kind of keep it and you grind it out and you kick to the opposition territory and try to get deep in their territory and keep them on the, in their side of the field. Honestly, I, I really think he, he lost on that game uh, just from that kick alone. It, it just led to continual errors. It, it led to missed tackles. It led to, like, leaving a lot of holes open in the defensive line. So I, I was disappointed with Sean Johnson in that. He needs to be better and be making a lot better decisions. He's too experienced now. There's no excuse. 
which could be his final contract. It does really need to be better. Uh, look, I thought Jack DeBellin was a highlight for me. 15 runs, 150 meters, 73 post contact, four tackle breaks, 18 tackles. You know, I thought he really had a good performance. And with a full preseason under his belt, like I've been saying last year, he's going to only get better. I um, mean, we started to see a lot of that uh, this week. You know, obviously, Mikieli Ravalawa having a hat trick there and was just at his damaging best. Um, it was really good to see. Uh, Zach Lomax as well had a great game. Uh, line break assist, try assist. Well, like I mentioned earlier with Ravalawa, with three try, uh, three line breaks, three tries, five tackle breaks. Uh, and he was just solid all up uh, and coming up for 173 metres, which I believe was team high as well. So had a great performance there. I thought Jack Bird at lock was great. 11 runs, 97 metres, a try, line break, two tackle breaks um, and 22 tackles um, in playing 80 minutes as well. So I, I didn't think it was terrible. I thought it was a, a very good uh, game from Jack Bird. Um, and looking to see how much more he progresses uh, in that side. But look, yeah, like I said, the Dragons get away with the biscuits in that one, uh, and they earn themselves the two points. The Storm 26 defeated the Tigers 16, and put it down to how you want. We talk about Melbourne all the time, but it was such a great win from them. They lost uh, Brandon Smith in the first minute to a minute and a half of that game with a broken hand. And as the game went on, they lost George Jennings to an ACL injury and Christian Watts to an Achilles injury. Uh, both ruled them out for the season, unfortunately. But it's moments like this where you pay the big bucks to your spine players to really step up. And yes... I know it's against the West Tigers, and I know they're not that great of a side, but for crying out loud, Jerome Hughes absolutely demoralized the side. They really stepped it up. Him and uh, Ryan Pappenhausen really took control of that side, three men down. Um, and and the, the youngsters that came through in that side uh, that played such a pivotal role with obviously Harry Grant being suspended as well as Cameron Munster, we're talking quality players missing from that side and players being injured as well, that these kids really came in and, and took control and, and played some exciting football. You know, I thought Tyron Richard, you know, I thought he was very good. I thought Alec McDonald making his debut as well uh, was pretty impressive as well. Uh, Tepo Mora, excuse me, I thought Tepo Mora was pretty good. Only, only saw 15 minutes, but these, it's, it's just that next level mentality, that next man mentality, next man up. Who is going to be injured? Who can step it up? And I, and I thought that Storm played such a very uh, interesting style of footy there. Um, where when that next man up mentality, they just go in and do their job and they break out to be phenomenal players but like I said uh, very tough night for the Tigers uh, look the Tigers were leading most of the uh, most of the game and I thought they played pretty well and they should have won this game there's no excuses there but it, they lack that experience in those games where they have other team has their men down does really make it harder for them to kind of close out a game and we saw that in the dying minutes of that game uh, like I said the, there were three tries scored in a 15 minute period to Jerome Hughes, Xavier Coates, and Raymond Smith that really dented the Tigers' hopes. Um, but they'll be better for it, hopefully. Um, it, yeah, it was just disappointing to see that from the Tigers really dropped that game. They were leading most of the game, and they really should have won. And it was disappointing to see them drop that game. Um, but look, when, like I said, if you're going to allow the Storm to come back with a depleted side the way they had, missing about five to seven players, it really shows exactly where the Tigers are and it doesn't seem that much improvement was done in the offseason. Although it was round one, it's too early to tell. It just didn't give me great signs to see from the Tigers. And Nelson Osofa Solomon, I thought was the best on field for me in terms of the forwards. 30 runs, 130 metres, four tackle breaks, two offloads and 17 tackles. But like I said, Jerome Hughes, just unreal. Uh, the way he carries that side on his back is, a, is freakish. Had 110 only metres, he scored a try, made two line breaks, had seven tackle breaks, uh, made two offloads, 18 tackles. You know, I thought it was really, really good uh, in that side. And Ryan Pappenhausen, you know, just another influential game. He had two try assists, line break assists, ran for 109 metres, uh, had an offload um, and made five to seven tackles that game as well. So, look, obviously they get a few reinforcements back next week, Storm, um, and they'll be better for it. It was just nuts to see the way the Tigers played and really they should have won out that game, which was very poor to see. Uh, the second last game of the round, uh, Eagles 22 defeated the Titans 28 and a very enjoyable first half of rugby league from both sides. Um, you know, 26-24 halftime, Parramatta were leading uh, and I love the attacking football that both sides uh, came up with. Obviously, it was caused by a lot of errors. You know, Eagles would score a try um, and in that, that attacking set, sorry, in the set from when uh, off kickoff, they would always drop that ball. Very disappointing. They've got to clean that up. But like I said, both sides capitalized on a lot of errors. And it was very disappointing to see the Eagles concede 28 points. The Titans were actually very good. I'm not going to lie. In attack, they were sublime. In defense, they were shocking. But I thought they were actually going to get pummeled 
by the Eels. I thought that the Titans missing AJ Brimson and missing Corey Thompson, I thought they were actually going to lose this game and, and lose comfortably. But Will Smith had a very good game filling it out in the halves and stepped up against his old side. Uh, Jaden Campbell played some good football as well. Toby Sexton wasn't terrible. The forwards led up and played well. But the second half was just so poor. So many errors. Eels needed to capitalize on a lot of opportunities that they didn't. Also the Titans as well. So... Look, the times would be better definitely for it. Um, and I just think that, yeah, the Eels were very, very lucky to get away with that one. Jaden Campbell's tackle on Sean Russell. Now, very debatable. People are sitting here, are sitting on the fence. A lot of people are saying that it was a great tackle um, and it needed to be done. Other players, uh, sorry, other people are saying that it was wrong because he got broken ribs and he um, got a punctured lung. You cannot judge the tackle on the player's injury. So Jaden Campbell's tackle on Russell, completely fine. He had his arms out to try and, and avoid the play. Yeah, all right, he came in with his knees, but what are you expecting him to do? It's hard for Jaden Campbell to not make an attempt. I would rather Jaden Campbell make an attempt at that and make a play for it rather than just him watching it and, and us criticizing. And then next thing you know, we're criticizing Jaden Campbell for not putting an effort in defense. He needed to make that tackle. It was unfortunate that Sean Russell's lung was punctured and he's got two broken ribs. No one likes to see injuries. I definitely don't. But to City and say that the, no effort should have been made, I think he's very poor. I think it was a fair tackle. He's trying to save a try. All right, the try wasn't saved, but he needed to attempt at least to save that try, which was, and he didn't. And unfortunately, Sean Russell had to come off the field injured, which which really sucked. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, it's very important that we don't judge the hit from um, the injury. We judge the hit based on what we see in that moment. So, I look, I thought it was completely fine. Jaden Campbell, good to be playing this week. Shouldn't have been charged either. A lot of people blown up about that, but I don't see anything in it. Um, and I thought it was a fair attempt at a tackle. If he just let knees in, hands behind him, no issue. But, like I said, he, he did the right things to try to stop that, uh, stop that try. And it was just unfortunate Sean Russell came out the other end with a punctured lung and two broken ribs. Isaiah Papali'i, 17 runs, 193 meters, 86 post-contact meters, nine tackle breaks, offloaded 26 tackles. Another big 80-minute performance from him. Showing no signs of slowing down as well. So it, he's got another big year to provide for Parramatta Eels before he goes to the Tigers next year. And it's a great start to see from him. And the, the two props, Regan Campbell-Gillard, Junior Paulo, big um, big games from them. For uh, Campbell-Gillard, 16 runs, 179 metres, 19 tackles. Junior Paulo, 18 runs, 160 metres, and 23 tackles. Moving on to the last game of the round, the Bulldogs, six defeated the Cowboys, four. Look, uh, I'm a proud fan. I'm so proud of their defence. Uh, Cowboys came at him and attacked and attacked and attacked and we just held them off. I thought it was great hands for that try that was scored. Braden Burns to Jaden Ockenball. I thought it was a really good try. Uh, and I, I, look, obviously we have a lot of work to do in attack. Our attack is not where it needs to be. We have signed 9 10 plays. It does need a bit of time. But I just thought the way we held in defense and we owned up for each other, I thought it was huge. Poor performance from the Cowboys. It's very poor. And, and this is the thing that burns me about the Cowboys, right? you got attacking weapons all over the park. It's not like they're uh, lacking attacking ability like the Tigers. They've got Hamasai Tabarafado at fullback. They've got Chad Townsend in the halves with Tom Dearden, who Tom Dearden in the first 15, 20 minutes was very, very threatening. You've got a decent hooker there as well. You've got Peter Hiku in the centers with Valentine Holmes. You've got a forward pack that has players, you know, with Jason Tamalolo and Colin Hess. This is, they should have put the Bulldogs away comfortably. And I, and I said it last week, and, and, and I I sat there and I just watched their attack, and, and it just looked so bizarre. It, it didn't bring much out for me to think, oh, this, this is going to be a genuine threat. Now I see why the Cowboys looked at as a potential wooden spoon side. They should have put the Bulldogs away. They've got too many uh, attacking opportunities through their players that they have all over their side, and they couldn't utilize them. And oh, look, Jason Tamalai, they're playing 50 minutes again. When's this going to end? This is just becoming a circus now. Um, there's got to be a wake-up call from the coach, from the coaching staff. Steve George Arles, Dean Young, Payton, wake up. Tamalola has to be playing 80 minutes. He plays 80 minutes, we lose this game. Now, on that try that was disallowed, he was offside. I'm not sitting here like uh, a sorry Bulldogs fan. He was offside. Um, it made a lot of sense once he... Went up uh, to the video ref in the bunker. They reviewed it. If it didn't, wasn't reviewed, I sat there and I was crushed that we lost. But when the decision got overturned because it was offside, very fair call. Um, and look, very just very poor effort from the Cowboys. They, they really should have uh, 
put us away and they didn't and they paid for it and the Bulldogs would just turned up in defense and were gritty and, and I'm, I'm very proud. I'm very proud of that. Uh, look, Luke Thompson stepped it up for us. 15 runs, 130 meters, 45 tackles. And Jeremiah Nano, I thought it was really impressive. 14 runs, 153 meters, a line break, three tackle breaks, and 32 tackles. And that's round one done. Moving over to our Super Coach segment. Uh, look, I finished the week on 986. A lot of players really did underperform for me. Um, if I just look to bring that up now, um, oh, like James Sadasco scored 32, um, and he didn't have the best of games. Uh, and there was lucky a lot of punch all over the park as well. Uh, I thought, you know, Ryan Pappenhausen was good for me, 71. Lucky I captained him because if I hadn't captained him, then I would have been on a lot less than what I was actually on. Um, but look, I was obviously missing Harry Grant this week due to his suspension, but I kept him in my side anyway. Um, but with the team, like I said, you know, Chris Vandal scored 47. Payne Haas was influential, 91. Fenua Blake, 51, was pretty good. Um, Josh King, 41 in 60 minutes, well, I'll take. Uh, Max King, I bought in this week. I traded 12 for 4 Sipley, who got 31 for Max King. Max King in, in 38 minutes got 55 points, and the only attacking start was an offload, and he made 40 tackles. So definitely one I had to bring into my side. Crichton finished with 66, Aitken 58, Arrow 62. Baltimore didn't play, got 62. Tuolagi from the Tigers was on 61 and got downgraded to 46. Schneider, I thought, was solid, 45, but we're missing this week because of COVID. Uh, Lockley Elias was poor for me, 28. Johnson, solid, 66, but ha has to go. We'll probably go for either Jerome Luai type or I might put Amoni in my center, for my center wing to my 5 8 and then maybe bring in someone like a Brian Kelly or Daniel Tupo or Joey Manu. Potentially. I, I still haven't worked that out yet, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, but Lomax, 70. Targo, 71 for the Panthers, who had a very good game. Uh, Penasini, 47 in pure base stats. I will take that and run every day of the week. Amoni was poor with 23. Um, and like I said, Tedesco, 32 with Papenhaus and 71. So a couple of changes I do need to make. I don't know if I'm going to be tempted to make a third trade. Uh, but my side will look pretty much the same. Um, I'm not going to have a halfback this week with Schneider missing due to COVID and Cleary still injured. But... I'll go a man down. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, and yeah, just really going to see how I'll, I'll go this week. Uh, but I think with Harry Grant coming in, I should be averaging, I should be hitting over that thousand mark, uh, but I will be a player down and I'll have an auto emergency potentially in, in Josh Schiller um, and either between him or Randall. So I, I can't really go wrong with those two. But look, that's my super coach wrap. Uh, like I said, didn't have the greatest of starts, but hopefully as the year goes on, we'll definitely build on from that news around the NRL world, I've missed this segment. I've missed talking every week about all the latest news around the NRL world. Uh, look, Ryan Sutton, his missus went on Instagram last week um, and made a proper complaint because uh, her husband wasn't or partner isn't selected in the side because he signed with the Bulldogs on a three-year deal. This whole thing with social media and, and these girlfriends, players, and wives has to stop. If I had a girlfriend or, or I was married and I had and my boss make a decision about my employment or, or a decision about what I needed to do, and my wife went in and messaged my boss, I would lose my mind. It's not something that you do. You can't just go about and talking on behalf of your partner on social media and making a mockery of that player in the club. Unfortunately, the reason that players' wives do that or players' partners do that or even players sometimes do that themselves because they don't respect the sport enough as an occupation. If these players, wives, or partners appreciated it as their occupation and not just a game, they will look at this very differently. And that's what I generally believe it comes to. It has to stop. It can't be going on anymore. It's it's embarrassing. I feel for the players that actually their partners go and talk on their behalf. They're a bunch of cats. Go and talk to the club. Go and talk to management. Don't get your, your partner having a stick behind social media, behind the phone, and being a keyboard warrior. It's never a good way to go. It's never going to work. Ken Munster has signed with Brandon Astor's uh, uh, agency, his player agency, He's um, as a player manager. So Ken Munster has a new player manager in Brandon Astor after cutting ties with his previous one. So it's a big coup for Astor and his firm there. Corey Haru and Ira re-signs to the end of 2025, rejecting um, offers from the Dolphins as well. So good to see him renew that loyalty there for the club. And I really miss him uh, at the Dogs. Jacob Belik gets added to the Titan squad. as The uh, second rower gets upgraded to the Titan squad and signs a two-year deal. Kurt Baptiste has announced his retirement, uh, was mainly known for his role at hooker for the Raiders, uh, moved on to the Cowboys and the Roosters as well. So, uh, look, didn't have the grace of careers, was always injured, but was very influential um, anytime he took the field. So all the best to Kurt Baptiste in his retirement. 
Uh, Parramatta are in talks to extend Will Penasini, which I think is probably the smartest decision they've made in years in terms of recruitment, uh, which I'm looking forward to to seeing him extend at the club. Uh, Storm will be looking to sign Tariq Sims for 2023. He was uh, seen meeting with uh, his wife, who's his manager, and Craig Bellamy and Frank Panisi. So because Storm can't get him in this year due to uh, salary cap constraints, uh, they'll be definitely bringing him on next year since the Dragons don't want to borrow him uh, from 2023. Uh, Sports Minister Stuart Ayres has named um, a stand at the new Sydney football stadium after Arthur Beetson, after much talk of that not happening. So it's good to see that happening and great way to honour Arthur Beetson. Uh, Kemal Matu Ulagi um, has signed a deal with the Sea Eagles, yet to be confirmed by the club, but has confirmed he's heading to Manly. Uh, Manly will confirm at some stage later this year, like they always do. Um, and the big news, uh, the Melbourne Storm are planning uh, what's meant to be an up to, an up to $8 million raid to keep their spine all together. Um, Cameron Munster, Harry Grant, and Jerome Hughes, they want to keep in a package deal uh, to keep the success of the club going with that spine. Um, they've offered Munster a two-year, $1.6 million deal. So it's a pay decrease from what he was on before, considering he was on about nine fifty to not a million a year. Um, for I've heard that he's not um, looking to accept that offer, and he needs to wants to be keeping that salary that he was on previously. Um, Harry Grant has been offered a three-year, $2.7 million deal, or could potentially even be a three-year, $3 million deal. Um, and Jerome Hughes has asked for a four-year, $3.6 million deal. So uh, big money being thrown around at the club at the Storm to keep the spine together, considering they've already got Pappenhausen on 800 k a year to the end of 2025. So Storm are making moves to keep their spine together and to keep their squad strong, considering that the Dolphins have raided their whole back row. Um, and they'll be looking to kind of keep their squad together uh, and to try and make an impact for the years to come post Craig Bellamy. Um, round two, ins and outs, um, and my tips for the weekend coming up. Uh, the Storm will take on the Rabbitohs. Uh, for the Storm, Brendan Smith, Christian Walsh, and George Jennings are gone uh, from the side. Brendan Smith is out for four to five weeks with a broken hand. Christian Walsh and George Jennings are done with Achilles and ACL injuries for the remainder of the season. Um, Cameron Munster and Harry Grant come back into the side. Um, so Harry Grant will replace Brendan Smith, and Cameron Munster will take the spot of um, Nick Meany. Uh, Dean Aramea will replace George Jennings on the wing, while Jesse Bromwich will replace um, Christian Walsh over at prop. And for the Rabbitohs, uh, just the one main change, Latron Mitchell returns that back at fullback, pushing Alex Johnston to the wing and dropping Josh Mansell to the reserves. Um, it's it's Craig Bellamy's 500th game. Uh, Storm haven't lost in Melbourne in 17 occasions against Rabbitohs, which is all the occasions. So I'm going to go Storm. I want to say by 12, but I think it would be more like 18, but we'll stick with 12 for now. Dragons come up against the Panthers. Uh, for the Dragons, Aaron Woods is out with a hammy injury. Uh, replaced by Francis Mollo into the starting side, and George, George Burgess makes his debut off the bench. Um, and Michael Mollo is the new 18th man. For the Panthers, one change. Moses Leota is out for eight weeks with a shoulder injury and is replaced by Spencer Lenu um, with Matt Eisenhuth joining the bench. And we're going to go to the Panthers this game. It's too hard to ignore them two weeks in a row. And I, th I think they'll get the best of the Dragons and, and be able to beat them comfortably as well. So uh, Panthers are my tip for that round. The Roosters will come up against the Sea Eagles. Um, the Roosters are 1-17. to just do wait on late mail on Victor Radley and Billy Smith whether they do take part in the game due to concussion. Uh, for the Seagulls, Dylan Walker has been named to replace Tolatau Kula. If Walker's on 100%, Kula will go back into the side and the side will remain 1-17. to oh, This game, uh, going to be tough. Uh, I don't know who to pick. Uh, usually it says go with your gut, but my gut's not really giving me anything. Um, look, I, I'm going to go out off a limb and I'm probably going to tip the Seagulls Bit of a shocker, I know. Uh, I think Roosters need a bit more time together to work out their combinations. I'm going to go Seagulls by four points. I think it'll be a close one. Uh, the Titans come up against the Warriors. Uh, for the Titans, AJ Brunson will take the spot of Will Smith, who moves to the bench. Um, and Tanner Boyd will be named in the reserves. For the Warriors, Reese Walsh returns to the side, uh, pushing Shino harris Tevita to the halves. Partner, uh, to, and Nick Rima, Kurt Nick Rima has been dropped. Um, Ash Taylor comes into halfback to take the spot of Sean Johnson, who's Tony's peck, who's out for four weeks. Jesse Arthurs replaces uh, Viliami Valea. On, uh, due, he's out due to knee injury for three to four weeks. Um, Adam Pompey will replace Daniel Telezesniak on the wing, who's out for six to eight weeks with a broken thumb. And Matt Lodge is back in the side, moving Buddy Al forward to the bench and Ben murdoch Masilla out of the side. I think the Titans will win this one uh, now that they're full, uh, their strength. They're going back to full strength, sorry. Um, I am hearing... Check out the late mail though, guys. Very important you check in late mail right before the games. That way you're not really long on my tips because it does come out a little bit early. Um, but I am hearing and I am um, of understanding that uh, Jaden Campbell is in doubt as well as even AJ Brimson and Aaron Clark, which is three members of their spine. 
Um, so just keep an eye out for late mail on that, or I'm going to go Titans to win that game. Uh, the Sharks come up against the Eels. Uh, Cameron McInnes, uh, so the Sharks are 1-17. to Cameron McInnes, uh, Connor Tracy, and Franklin Pelle are named in the reserves. For the Eels, Sean Russell um, is obviously out with that rib injury for an indefinite period, replaced by Wonga Blake with Tom Opicic moving to the centers. Um, Oregon Kafusi will take the spot of Ryan Madison in, at lock. Madison down with a hammy injury, and Nathan Brown has been named on the bench. And Bryce Carwright will take the spot of Jacob Arthur, who's been dropped on the bench as well. I want to go Parramatta to win this game. I think Parramatta will bounce back and win this game by 12. Um, and this is for the Johnny Manor Cup, uh, the game that's played every year. Johnny Manor obviously passed away due to Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2013. Um, I know um, there's a, a group of about 20-odd that are going to go do a walk for them. So um, in the 35Ks, walk from Parramatta, a Combank Stadium to Points Bet Stadium in, in the Shire. So uh, very interesting to see how that goes. Um, but look, it's a work, walk for Hodgkin's lymphoma. They want to raise $100,000 to get a full-time nurse to be able to treat Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and honouring uh, the life of Johnny Manor, who um, didn't play a lot of footy um, in his time. He was alive, did die at the age of 23 in 2013, um, but had such an impact on both clubs that both clubs um, wanted to honour him every year with a trophy and a game after him. So um, if you guys can donate, I'll check out the link below um, in, in our description on YouTube um, and even on our podcasting streams as well that you can go and, and donate to that and raise some awareness there. Um, but I've gone Eagles for that game as my tip. The Cowboys come up against the Raiders. Jordan McLean takes the spot of um, Joanne Tanul Brown, who's out with a hamstring injury, with Griffin Neme named for his first game of the year on the bench. Um, Cohen Hess will move to prop. Tam Lowe goes back to the bench, and Mitch Dunn uh, has been named to the bench as well. Uh, for the Raiders, Matt Forley takes the spot of Brad Schneider, who's out due to COVID. Um, jo- Tom Starling replaces Josh Hodgson, who's out for two to four weeks with an injury, with Adrian Trevelyan to make his debut off the bench. Um, another kid that Ricky Shaw is promoting off the side. Um, another tough game. I'm probably going to back the Raiders here. Just Cowboys really disappointed me in how they were in attack. And uh, I think the Raiders will, will take the biggest this one uh, and by about 12 points or so as well. Uh, the Knights will come up against the Tigers in Sunday afternoon footy. Knights are 1-17 to with Daniel Saifidi named on the extended bench. Um, and for the Tigers, James Tamo returns to the side, moving Alex Twal to the bench and Luke Garner uh, to the reserves. Uh, I'm going to go Knights here. I think Knights will win comfortably if they can remain consistent and they're playing at home as well. Um, I know Tigers got the best of them at home last time, so I think the t- Knights will be looking to get this win over the Tigers. And the last game of the round, a lot of anticipation for this game. The Bulldogs coming up against the Broncos. Um, Tavita Pango Jr. will make his club debut after he was a late scratching last week, moving Corey Woodell to the bench and Chris Patolo to the reserves. Uh, Patolo, Brandon Burns, um, Brett Naden, and Jeremy Marshall King all need to pass concussion protocol to play. They've been named at this stage. Whether they pass uh, concussion protoc- protocol is yet to be confirmed. For the Broncos, Adam Reynolds will make his club debut as well, um, obviously recovering from COVID. He'll be pushing Albert Kelly to 5'8", moving um, Billy Walters to the bench, and Tyron Roberts will move to the reserves. Uh, while Tessie New is back from a hamstring injury and will take the spot of Jermaine Asako, who has been dropped. I'm going to back my Bulldogs. I know it's a bit tough. I know it's a crazy call. I'm going to back my Bulldogs to win this one, and they'll and they'll do it by a couple points, but I wouldn't be ruling out the Broncos for those that don't want to agree with me. Definitely understanding for the Broncos, with Adam Reynolds returning to the side and Tessie New as well. They'll have almost their full strength side out again at the park. Um, but yeah, look, I'm going to tip the dogs with them by six. Um, and those are my tips for the week. Guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of League Chat with the Stat. You know where to find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube under League Chat with the Stat. If you want to jump on, if you want to be a guest on the show, just send through an email to leaguechatwiththestat at gmail.com. Um, and if you want me to come to you, I can get out of this little studio that i got set up here and I can come to where you guys are and record where you are, what's most comfortable for yourself. Um, and I'll be looking to get a lot of guests on this year as well. So make sure you inquire that way. It's not too late to, to join our tipping comp. Um, our team at Fanzo, our friends at Fanzo have teamed up to uh, run a tipping comp on their website. You download the Fanzo app. Um, and the idea is that you go into your local sports bar, you put in your tips um, and in the old school fashion way and just bring it back to that you know, old school type of pub feel about that. So... Make sure if you guys want to jump on, the code is League Chat. It's on, um, it'll be at the bottom of the description as well. Uh, but appreciate you joining me for round one review. Get excited for round two this weekend. Uh, let's hope we get eight tips for mate this week. Um, but look, it's good to be back behind the hot desk once again. I appreciate you all tuning in. You have yourselves a great weekend. Enjoy the footy. We'll see you back next week with a round two review. All the best, guys. Take it easy.